This is Little Fire Cloud's Dream from Treasury of American Indian Tales. The Delawares were a peaceful tribe, hunting and fishing in their rich valley and not bothering their neighbors, for they had plenty and needed little more than they were able to obtain themselves with their strong bows and sharp arrows and their well-kept fishing gear. It was late spring, and one day, as Little Fire Cloud romped and played in the village, his father called to him. Come, Little Fire Cloud, it is time we build a new can canoe. Shortly we shall be needing a new canoe, and if we do not start work now, it will not be ready when the time comes to leave camp. So father and son started out to gather the materials to make a fine new canoe. The Indians of the forest and lakes depended a great deal upon the canoe, and were wise enough to construct them of material that was easy to obtain. Light cedar made the ribs and the planking of the canoe, and over this the Indians stretched a tight cover of birch bark. Then they took spruce roots and split them, and these they used to sew the seams of the canoe together. They then would caulk the spaces with a tar-like substance, which was made from pine pitch and soot. When finished, the product was firm and sturdy, but above all, if the canoe should become injured in any way, the materials were always handy in the forest which to make repairs. Finally, Little Fire Cloud and his father had gathered all the necessary equipment together, and the work on the canoe had was started. Father and son worked very hard at the job, and a few days later the canoe was completed. As the two finished their work, they stood back to admire the job, and Little Fire Cloud said, Is it not beautiful, Father? It is the most beautiful canoe I have ever seen in our own village or any of our neighbors. Yes, Little Fire Cloud, it really is a beautiful canoe, and one which we can be proud of. For the rest of that day that remained, Little Fire Cloud could talk of nothing else but the beautiful canoe that he helped his father to build. Finally, supper was over, and it was time to retire. That night, as Little Fire Cloud fell asleep, his head was all full of visions of canoes and rapids and great lakes and rivers. Soon the confusion of many things became one thing, and Little Fire Cloud found himself standing on the shore of a great lake. He did not know how he got there or what lake it was, but the water was a beautiful blue-green, and it was calm and smooth. It was daytime, and, as Little Fire Cloud looked upon the lake, in the distance he saw a canoe coming toward him. In the bow of the canoe stood a great warrior, his hands folded across his chest, and his eyes looking right at Little Fire Cloud. In the stern of the canoe, a young warrior softly paddled the canoe forward to the shore, directly to where Little Fire Cloud was standing. As the canoe drew closer, Little Fire Cloud saw that it was made of shimmering silver birch bark and looked so clean and new. As the bow scraped the shore, the warrior stepped from the canoe and walked to where Little Fire Cloud was standing. Come, Little Fire Cloud, step into the canoe and we shall take a short trip. I do not know if I should, said Little Fire Cloud, overcome by the great warrior who stood before him. My father might wonder where I had gone. Do not worry about your father, for you will only be gone a short while, and we shall return you to this point on the shore. I have something I want to show you. So Little Fire Cloud, feeling a warmth toward this great warrior, stepped in and seated himself in the middle of the canoe. Then the great warrior stepped in and pushed away from shore. The warrior in the stern turned the canoe toward the middle of the lake and began to paddle steadily, his blade cutting the water neatly and hardly making a ripple. The canoe glided softly and smoothly across the water. Up ahead a mist had settled upon the water, and soon the canoe had entered this mist and was gliding softly through the water with nothing on any side but the cloudy white mist. All that Little Fire Cloud could see was water right next to the canoe. Little Fire Cloud called to the warrior, Where are you taking me, O great warrior of the lake? You shall see, little brave, said the great warrior without turning in the canoe. Soon the mist lifted, and there surrounding the canoe was a beautiful pool of water, with many streams running off in different directions. The Indian who was paddling guided the canoe into one of these streams, and as the canoe moved forward, the warrior pointed toward the shore. There, along the shore, Little Fire Cloud could see many beaver working diligently at gathering material for their homes. As the canoe continued along the stream, Little Fire Cloud saw many beautiful flowers and plants, and occasionally a deer could be seen drinking at the water's edge. Little Fire Cloud was quick to notice that the animals seemed to pay no attention to the canoe when it sailed past where they stood, except to lift their heads and look at this craft as it moved smoothly along the stream under the expert hands of the brave in the stern. Little Fire Cloud noticed that there were no weapons in the canoe. Soon they had reached a fork in the stream, and again the canoe was guided into one of the openings, and the trip continued. Many more wild flowers and animals were observed by Little Fire Cloud until suddenly they were in the mist once again, and all the beauty was behind them as they moved swiftly through the mist. 
When they broke from the cloud, Little Fire Cloud could see the shore of the lake once again, and he realized they must have traveled in a circle. Soon the canoe scraped the shore, and the warrior stepped out and assisted Little Fire Cloud. When the boy was safely ashore, the warrior said, Did you enjoy your trip? Oh, yes, answered Little Fire Cloud. Everything was so beautiful. Thank you very much for the nice ride and showing me all of the beautiful things of nature. Yes, Little Fire Cloud, there are many, many beautiful things in nature that can be seen if one travels quietly and peacefully in a good canoe. Nature is our friend, and if we remember this, many pleasant hours will be spent seeing nature. Do not do anything to spoil this picture, which will remain with you always. If you never raise your bow to kill unless you have need for food or clothing, game will always be plentiful. But if you wasted this beauty which is given to the Indian you, you are yourself, and your people will soon die from hunger and cold. To kill for the sake of killing is cruel and wasteful. Now I must say goodbye, for I have many miles to travel. Goodbye, little fire cloud, and remember your trip into the misty lake. With that, the warrior stepped into the canoe, and soon the canoe disappeared and turned into the distance. Suddenly, little fire cloud could feel a hand upon his shoulder as someone was shaking him. My son, my son, wake up. You have been dreaming. When little fire cloud opened his eyes, he was lying on his bed, and his father was standing over him. Oh, father, I had the most beautiful dream. A great warrior came and took me for a ride in a beautiful canoe and showed me the wonders of nature all in their splendor. And Little Fire Cloud went on to tell his dream in all of the beautiful detail that he could remember. His father was a good father, and so he listened patiently to his son. And when Little Fire Cloud had finished telling about the dream, his father said, Yes, my son, it was a beautiful dream. And in the dream, you learned a great lesson concerning the creatures of the wild, which I hope you will always remember.